Hi friends, it's Sunday Walker again, and I'm gathering that the Lord is going to have me do these videos um, very raw. I'm going to use the word raw because they're going to come to you when the Lord is urging me, pushing me to get this news out and whatever word that he has or uh, type of urgency that he has for me to speak to the world and so this will be the second video that I'm going to be uploading pertaining to this and in the description on my uploaded video this morning that I very rawly recorded late afternoon early evening yesterday you'll it'll explain a lot a lot of times I'm going to come to you looking like this, and that's just, it's okay. I, most of the time, the majority of the dreams or the visions that God gives me, thank you, Yeshua, is in the middle of the night. I get woken a lot, a lot, and this has been happening for six years. I've been born again, a Christ follower, fully born again, and, um, living in the Word of God for about six and three quarters years now. And very early on in my walk, when he came to me and called my name, is if you've ever listened to my testimony on this channel, I only have three videos uploaded, and um, I have no desire to become part of this world system in this form of communication. This is just literally a way that God has truly shown me I can get his word out and the urgency of what he's speaking and to get it out quickly. So please hear what the spirit has to say. Don't take any word from any man, any man, any woman, any prophet, um, any pastor, any teacher. Don't take any of their words unless you line it up with the Word of God. It has to line up with the Word of God. You need to take that to the Father God through Yeshua, His Son. Yeshua says, come to me and ask me and I will take it to my Father. Okay, so when you're praying, pray to the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. And He will listen. Your prayers from a righteous person will be heard from the Father through his Son, Yeshua. So take this to him and ask the Holy Spirit for understanding, for understanding. Even though my messages I do believe are very clear, there's not much hidden in these messages. A couple times will have me write things down that I don't yet understand, but I I truly believe with all 150% faith that I will one day or somebody will and I'm not concerned about it. I'm not concerned because I know that he's faithful and I, I just trust in him so much. I, I have no limits on the faith that our father is faithful and true and he never changes. So his word is always going to remain and you're always going to find the truth by seeking it. He says, seek and you shall find. So anything that I say on here that proceeded from my mouth or is going to proceed from my mouth, dear Heavenly Father, through Yeshua, your son, I pray that it is heard rightly and that you bless this word, for I am obedient in the name of Yeshua, my Savior, my Messiah, my God. I trust and I pray that all who hears this will too come to you so that you may know them on that day of judgment. So this, what I've been compelled to share with you today is something I wrote down on um, 11, 13, 22. So the day of this vision 
and night. It was actually a night prior and then the next morning. Um, I was was on 11-13-22. I actually think I wrote this like five days later, but I dated it the date that I had the vision. And um, I was guided, it, oats, oats came to my mind. And um, oats, <laughs> wheat, oats, um, tares, it just oats was coming to my mind and I wrote it in big letters down here. Um, I kept hearing that the night prior. The next morning when I got up, I kept finding three times, three times I found a uh, little evidence of oats, like oatmeal, real oatmeal. <laughs> and um, I knew right away the Lord was telling me oats, there's something with oats because you've placed oats everywhere. And I just was like, how and why would they be here? One being on my bathroom floor upstairs in our house, the very oddest place and Honestly, being human, I was thinking, oh, no, we have mice. We don't. <laughs> and that was just a silly thought that crossed my mind. But then I remembered the Lord kept sh showing me the word oats, O-A-T-S, literally. Well, that guided me to Psalms 25 when he talks about separating the wheats and the tares, you guys. So then I was prompted to write down what I had seen and heard the night prior, early in the morning when I was still in bed. And um, part of this I mentioned in my introduction video yesterday. Um, the time is now. I wrote down very first thing. The book is opened. Watchmen come out. There is work to be done. We are to be about our father's business. Very strongly, he said that. The message is urgent. Danger is ahead. Blow the trumpets, O daughter of Zion. O daughter of Zion. The whole world is soon to see what it is that I speak about. Many of you have entered into my true shalom, but many more that proclaim to be mine still remain in the dark and dread hands dead hands. I'm so sorry. Many of you that proclaim to be mine still remain in the dark and dead hands of the enemy, Satan. Explanation, explanation. This world and the ways of it, they have made their God. Lest they repent, they too shall die. Explanation, explanation. Blow your trumpets, my watchmen. There's much work to be done. Blow your trumpets, my loves. You that have sought me, I shall keep. For you have listened to my son, and through my spirit you have come to lay down your whole life for the sake of your Messiah. So I call you, my faithful daughter, to do my work before I return to gather my harvest. The laborers are few, my child. Do not fear for your God will never leave you or forsake you. Explanation, explanation. This is 11-13-22. So just a couple weeks ago. Look up in preparation of what's to come and sound the alarm for your redemption draws nigh. Again, daughter, I yell, blow the trumpet. Explanation, explanation. And I underlined that sentence blow your trumpet i underlined that it was so urgent loud and clear so the whole world may hear the warning of the lord and is soon coming to their place of dwelling wherever they may be explanation explanation i love you child love your father explanation with a heart continuing that day I heard the trumpets three in all, and on this day at 3.27 p.m., it was very specific, at 3.27 p.m., I heard those trumpets, and it was followed by a peaceful drip of melting snow forming a well of water. 
preceded by the caw of a crow. And this all happened in sequence. So I heard the trumpets, three blows, and followed by that was just a very peaceful drip of melting snow, like raindrops forming a well of water. And that was preceded. So I wrote this later, remembering that um, what preceded that was the caw of a crow explanation. I put in parentheses, warning of impending danger. And that's what that meant. But on this day, the crow's call was shortened, slash meaning, I wrote, hallelujah, the Lord said, the bride's time of trouble will also be shortened. He was showing me that in the, the call of the crow. He said, the bride's time of trouble will also be shortened. Quickly I come for you, my bride, before your endurance runs short. I will capture you in my loving arms. Hallelujah. Explanation, and I put a heart. Sound the alarm, blow the trumpets, and diligently do my work that I have set before you, so that soon you may lay down in a green, green pasture that I have prepared for you, my daughter. And when I wrote this, as he was showing me this, I just showing me the words to write down through the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I, I started to cry and tear up because the words, soon you may lay down in a green, green pasture that I've prepared for you, my daughter, just was so comforting and so warm and so restful. And then I said, amen, with a heart. That same day I wrote, which was 11, 13, 22, praise you, Yeshua, my Lord of Lords, my King of Kings, my God and Savior, to you I bow. Amen. Your dark hands I do see, and I and I meant literally his Hebrew hands. I see dark hands, knowing they're Yeshua's hands. They're so strong but so soft. And they're dark hands. I do see separating the tears from the wheat. And this is where it all made sense. It was in Psalms 25 at the beginning. In your dark hands, I do see the separating, the tears from the wheat for the coming judgment. From in your barn, the wheat shall remain safe from the fire. A year ago, the Lord God showed me Ezekiel 33. And, and I did state this in my first video yesterday basically calling all watchmen three times I heard his trumpet on that day as well we're calling God is calling all lukewarm Christians ones who say they believe but are walking in this world your hearts are far from him He's coming, and he's given us warning. He's given us lots of warning, lots. I've waited too long, I think, but the Lord has reassured me that his timing is best, and it's always perfect. And his times, my times, in my whole life, my times of times, anything in my life, he's got that in his hand. All my times are in his hand. I praise him for that. That's Psalm 91. Thank you, Yeshua. His time has been appointed as well when his judgment will come. The resurrection will happen as it's stated in the Bible. There's not one thing, friends, in the word of God that is not going to come to pass if it hasn't already. It will. His word is true and never changes. 
He's righteous and he's good. And he loves you and he loves me. And because of that love, he calls us to be his for all of those who accept him and follow him and lay down your life for him. Repent and draw near to him before it's too late. He's died for your sin. He's already covered that part. Any sins that you have had or will have through forgiveness, through repentance, he will forgive you because of what he did on that cross. It's a promise, and we I believe it. He does that. And he takes those sins, and he takes that shame, and he throws them as far as the east is from the west and remembers them no more. Then he places his Holy Spirit into our hearts so he can dwell still with us since he no longer dwells in this earth as a man as he walked with the disciples and the apostles one day in the past. The great news is he's living within us now through his spirit in the same act that he died for for our sins to take us out of bondage, bondage of this world so that we don't have to die for our sins if we accept him if we believe he is our God and he's Lord and he is God over all he's the only God in the universe Deuteronomy 6 hear O Israel there is one God one God and that God is Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ believe on him and you will live forever. You'll live eternally with him again. One day we will walk with him just like they did in the past, like it says in the Bible. But if we do not truly have true faith, like found in the book of James, you guys, there's a difference. There's many that say they follow Christ. There's many that say they are truly saved. There's many that say they truly believe they'll be in the kingdom one day. And like he says in Revelation, you're lukewarm. You're not truly following me. Your hearts are far from me. You profess with your mouth that you love me. But you don't follow me. I never knew you. I pray against that every day for everyone. I don't know everyone in this world, but I pray for them. Everyone. The love of Christ that abides in my heart has allowed me to love others more than myself. But most of all, him our number one commandment, to love him. And that's the only way we are going to be able to love others enough to pray for their salvation, even though they are wicked and vulgar and violent and vile. And it is up to us I don't care who you are. If you profess to be a Christian, you don't have to be a watchman. You don't have to be a prophetess. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be anything of that. But if you're a disciple of Christ, that means you're spreading the good news. That's our great commission. If you are a Christ follower and you love him, don't just let those be words on your lips and then live like a heathen. Don't live like the world. Don't keep the ways of the world. Don't listen to the world's music. Don't dress like the world. We are called to be set apart. Are you hearing me? The Lord tells us in his holy word, in the Bible, all these things, guys. This is not a human. This is not me making this stuff up. I don't do that. I've know nothing until the Lord called my name and I received him as my own. I professed him to be my Lord with my lips and in my heart, he, it was circumcised. It was changed. I did a 110% turnaround in my life. My mind set changed. My whole life changed. 
And that's what he says will happen when you truly love him, when you truly are walking with him, when you truly have a relationship with him, when you truly believe. Because in the book of James, he says, you say you believe in the Lord Yeshua. Well, good for you, he says. But so do the demons and the devil. They believe. They do. They believe in Christ. They know him. They know him, but they don't know him in, his, in their hearts. They don't serve him. They know who he is. They know he's real. But they don't serve him. And so the Bible makes it very, very, very clear that there is one way, one life, and one truth. And that is through Yeshua HaMashiach, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Messiah, our Messiah that has come to save mankind. Back to eternal perfection as he's always desired but I can tell you if you're not reading your Bible how are you going to know him how are you going to know his ways you're probably not praying to him either you're probably not taking him seriously and I don't tell you this to judge you because the meaning of judgment judging one's heart is to say what you should do and not do according to the word of God, but yet do that same very thing and have my heart cold and calloused against my God. And that's not true. I do strive to obey him daily and because I love him so much. It's not a burden to obey everything that I can in his word. And I pray this freedom on you guys. I've I've never found such freedom. When the Bible talks about freedom in Christ, it's true and it's real, you guys. It's, it's more freedom than what you think it is. I am free from wanting or just even the littlest tiny bit desiring the ways of this world. I don't want it. I don't desire it. I'm not tempted by it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because our God is more powerful. And I desire that for all of you. I pray daily. I do. I pray urgently, fervently, and diligently for everybody. I love my God, Yeshua HaMashiach, more than life, more than my children, more than mother or father, more than myself. And how deeply I love them. The Lord knows I would lay down my life for any one of them. I have five grown children, 20 precious grandbabies, beautiful inside and out, and five beautiful inside and out spouses married to my grown children that bring me joy and blessings so much. But I love my Heavenly Father my God, my Savior, more than all. May you take these words, pray on them, diligently study your Bible. Don't just read your Bible. Don't just go to church on Sunday. Don't just read your Bible on Sunday. Keep his Sabbath. Keep his rest. Don't just go to church on Sunday and think that you're saved. Don't. Most of you say Saturday is not the Sabbath. You're in a you're blaspheming against God. In his holy word, he says the seventh day is holy and he set it apart for all generations. Don't say that. Don't say that. It's not. All through scripture, you can see where the seventh day Sabbath has been made by God Yahweh himself and has continued to be a Sabbath. His word will never change. Man has made Sunday their Sabbath. But the problem is, even though they say they believe Sunday is their Sabbath, they don't physically rest. God has given us a physical rest. Yeshua said in all the New Testament, he speaks about it. And he tells us he is the Lord of the Sabbath. He doesn't deny his father's Sabbath. He would never do that. But there's stipulations that the Pharisees placed on people that we don't have to listen to. Yeshua has said that. And when we truly follow him, we're going to obey what he says. No man. The Catholic Church has changed his Sabbath day to a different day. We don't get to do that. This is a warning 
you guys, amongst what he has told me here, that he's sorting the wheats and the tares, and that to sound the alarm, danger is near. This is two separate things, yet yeah, all in one. Danger on our world in this physical world is going to be. It is soon. But then... If you're disobeying God, that wrath is going to come on you as well. Guys, be ready. I ask that you pray right now, if you never have, to truly seek out your creator, God, and Yeshua, his son, that died for you because he loves you enough to shed his blood to cover those sins that you're going to repent for. You're going to repent and hate those sins. Hate the way you used to be. You know, a very simple way to put it, and I say this a lot because it's just so simple and so true. When you are born again and changed anew and you have received Christ into your heart, you were one way and now you're going to be another. It It's just true. A glory to him and praise and honor to the king. Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. I'm going to keep you all in my prayer every day. I do, every single hour. And um, there will be more to come. I've got many words that the Lord has given me, but in His timing, it will be said. And I'll leave it for that. For now. And uh, Lord willing, He'll have more to come. I'm not worried if He doesn't, because... What needs to be said will be said, and what doesn't won't be. It's his will because it's perfect, and I trust his will always and forever. I love you all so much. I truly do. If it weren't for Christ in my life, no human can truly love. I love you enough to share you the warnings from the Lord because I am obedient to him, and he's calling us all to be obedient. If you love him, you will follow his commandments, John fourteen fifteen. I love you all, Lord willing. I will see you next time. Maybe in there. Maybe not. Maybe right here. I love you. Shalom.